Hello and welcome back. So we're going to build the MiG-21 fish bed from a Revel, Revel. Um, and we're going to start off by, at the beginning by gluing together the ejector uh, seat following the instructions. So this is just very simple and it all fits together. Now my intention with this kit is to build it as a prop for uh, taking photographs. So there will be some things done with it which some people may find alarming, um, but for the end result will be necessary. Now one of the issues this model has is it hasn't got a pilot, and I would actually like a pilot uh, in, the, uh, in the aircraft. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a World War II pilot, <laughs> yeah I know everyone's going to start crying, and I'm going to put him into this. And I'm going to use the uh, pilot out of the Airfix 109 that I have. Um, which will involve um, some uh, cutting of legs off, <laughs> but we'll get to that in a minute. So as you can see, the, the, uh, the ejector seat's actually um, quite detailed. It's got uh, seat belts and everything. So if you were to do a very detailed paint job on this, it would come out quite nicely. Now I want this to be used as a prop for photographs. And so one of the things I'm going to do is I'm actually going to paint the interior of the aircraft black. And the reason for that is, is that in photos, um, you can get some sort of strange looking artifacts if the uh, if there's actually too much detail visible inside the cockpit because of the way that the plastic canopies tend to warp things and so it doesn't actually come out too well so in reality you're actually better off, better off uh, for photography purposes actually just painting the thing black and then because you've got such vague shapes it actually looks more realistic but we'll get to that in a minute Okay, so now we're fitting uh, parts into the one half of the fuselage. So we've got the interior of the main landing gear bay. Which has been a bit too generous with the glue there, I know. But the uh, panel's actually quite detailed. So as I say, if you're building this with the wheels down, it'll actually, you know, there's quite a lot of uh, potential here for uh, doing quite a bit of uh, excess detail if, you, if you're into that. So what we'll do is we'll just put that panel in. And then we're going to put the uh, engine nozzle the uh, cockpit and the front landing gear bay into into the uh, into the fuselage half. Now what I'm doing here is is before the glue sets, I'm actually putting the other half of the fuselage on. And giving everything a bit of a squeeze and this way I'll make sure that the cockpit uh, and the other component any other components like the nozzle and the front wheel bay um, will not interfere with the fit of the fuselage later uh, so I'm not actually gluing them together I'm just using the two halves to sort of make sure that those internal components are lined up right because the number of times in the past I've glued in a cockpit into one half let it set and then come back and then found I can't get the other half of the fuselage onto the thing um, it's upsetting. So basically, uh, it's just a way of checking the fit of the fuselage halves. As you can see, it's it's not bad. The uh, rear stabiliser does tend to sort of uh, part, but you can just fix it with a clothes peg when you're gluing it together. But otherwise, it's, the fit of this is actually not, not bad at all. It's quite fine. Okay, so now with the en uh, engine nozzle in place, I'm, I'm painting it black on the inside. Uh, some silver paints will end up in here later as well to give a bit of detail. But again, this is one of those things that doesn't really show up in photos. So it's actually what you can't see is sometimes uh, more suggestive than what you can. And we can always do stuff with Photoshop and stuff later. So as you see there, I'm just painting the inside black. There you go, quick adjustment. No one will ever know I did that. It's just very simple. And in fact, sometimes if, there's a, uh, if the painting's not so good and it's a bit streaky, it actually works in your favour because that suggests detail in pictures. Now I'm just painting the inside of the cockpit area black as well. Um, now I do realise that anyone who's doing fine detailing will probably be horrendously offended and upset, but there's, there is a purpose to why I'm doing it like this. As I say, this is I'm really doing this as a prop rather than a model, if that makes sense to you. And what I'll do is I'll do another video of a photo and it's Photoshop to sort of show you what I'm trying to get at and what I'm trying to do with this, which I think you might find very interesting. So that's the paint done. And now we're going to glue the two halves together. Now 
Now, to obviously, to hold things together whilst they're being glued, you can use a variety of things like tape and what have you. Um, but these little clothes pegs, which were actually for holding up Christmas cards with, they came in a pack from the two euro shop for two euro. Uh, they're quite handy for doing that because they're not too much pressure in them. Because some some things will actually squeeze things too much and put them out of shape. Now here I'm just using some Tamiya thin cement just to use capillary action to run into places where maybe a bit of glue hasn't been applied as much as I'd have liked. That's quite handy stuff that is as well. Because you just touch it and it runs into the hairline crack if you know what I mean, fills it. Okay, so now that we have this all nicely clamped up, we should leave that to dry and whilst that's drying we should get on with doing the wings as per the instructions. Now again, these are uh, very nice flat supersonic wings, so they're uh, very thin. And um, again, there's no warping on the, on the mouldings. And just uh, sufficient glue just to hold everything together. I know it does look like I'm slapping it on, but I'm not really, I swear. Okay, now that fun part in most builds, we get to put the wings on. So again, we're just going to glue, apply a little bit of Tamiya glue, just dab it on. And on this stage as well, we'll put the rear horizontal stabiliser on as well. And it does fit together quite well, there's no horrible big gaps as such. So what I'll do is I'll put this on and I'll just eye on it to eyeball it straight because both surfaces are meant to be in line with each other. And let them dry. Okay, and you can see I've used a couple of clothes pegs to balance the uh, model so it's so the wings and, and tail plane are nice and vertical and we'll let that dry. So now we'll do the same for the other side. There's something very satisfying in any uh, airplane build where you where you get the wings on just uh, the whole thing comes to, comes together makes it a nice shape. Now we put on what I think is an external cannon, quite a big thing. Okay, now we're going to attach the shock cone and air intake. I think the radar was mounted in the shock cone as well. Now this model doesn't come with uh, instructions for fitting the undercarriage doors in the closed position. It assumes that you're going to want to build this as a display model standing on its undercarriage. So basically what I've had to do is trim off some of the little uh, mouldings that allow the, uh, these panels to hinge and attach to the undercarriage legs and I've glued them straight in place to cover the, cover the, uh, uh, the apertures of the uh, undercarriage bays. Now the rear undercarriage doors, the main undercarriage doors, uh, all fitted in fairly well actually. Like as usually when these uh, kits have been designed for one uh, position of the undercarriage, um, it turns out that the panels don't actually fit anything. So you end up doing a bit of trimming and filling, but in this case it will work quite well. Okay, so just assembling some of the uh, stores for the underside. So we've got the already the main fuel tank, drop tank uh, assembled. and just putting together the rocket pods. As I say, we've got the option to use uh, bombs or it might be a, a, some sort of electronic countermeasure is I think the third option. Uh, but I'm going to go with uh, the rocket pods. Okay, so we've fitted the external fuel tank and the uh, pitot tube probe thing on the front and we're ready to go spraying. Right, so I've already sprayed the model with uh, Tamiya White Primer, which I've allowed to dry, and now I'm using Vallejo 
aluminium as the colour to paint the aircraft. I have to have a bit of a love-hate relationship with the airbrush. On the one hand it gives you lovely flat results, which is quite hard to do with a paintbrush. But if there's anything remotely wrong with the paint, like if you've got a little lump in it or something like that you're not aware of, it'll just clog and it'll start spitting and um, you'll just want to kill the thing. So anyway, just spraying away. Now the airbrush I'm using is a Harder and Steenbeck paired up with a little uh, air compressor. Now, I went through uh, three eBay airbrushes before I got the Harder and Steenbeck because basically uh, you can take this thing apart and clean it quite easily whereas a lot of other airbrushes frankly they fall apart after you've stripped them down a couple of times so that's why I used it. Here I'm using some of the uh, aluminium paint mixed with a little bit of brown to give the sort of burnt metal look to the uh, exhaust nozzle and I'll also use this colour to provide some dirty streaks on the plane as well. The green on the uh, bottom of the aircraft is going to have a few more coats, it's just the first coat came out really rough but I'm just painting that by hand. I could mask it off and spray it but uh, it's just more fun frankly to use a brush. So here I'm just painting some dirty streaks on the aircraft, kind of like from the undercarriage bays, etc. Wherever you think you might get a bit of dirt, which will then get you know, streaked by the uh, airstream. That's basically what I'm doing. Okay, now for some uh, aircrew surgery. Now this is my ME109 pilot, and I'm going to try and get him to fit the ejector seat of this uh, of this MiG. As you can see, he's man-spreading something rotten and he's not going to fit in that seat, so unfortunately I'm going to have to do some surgery on him. So here I've just gone ahead a little bit, and you can see I've cut his legs off and I've shaved his hips and wedged him in the seat and glued him in, and now I've painted him black. Now I'm just gluing the transparent components on. I'm just using the canopy here to make sure that that goes on without it um, setting and then find you can't get the canopy on at all. Now I've glued the two canopy, clear canopy components on. I'm just checking that they're lined up. Now basically I've used a very fine paintbrush and the same aluminium paint and I've just painted the canopy lines on by hand. Now as it turns out the canopy lines in this are very simple so it's actually not too hard to do. Um, so you don't have to resort to using masks and stuff. Um, just depends on how finickety you want to be about the finish. So anyway, as you can see there's little rivet details on the canopy as well. Okay so now we're going to do a bit of decaling and, get, and we're going to use Microsoft Microsets to help our decals uh, stick and mould to the shape of the plastic. These products look like they're messing up the finish that you've just sprayed on, but in fact if you just streak it in the right direction it all dries out uh, fine and look okay. So here we're just applying the uh, nose numbers. The same thing applies. Um, basically just using water slide transfers which have been soaked a little bit in warmish water. can be cold, it just takes longer. Line them up, squeeze, them, squeeze out any bubbles with this Microsol Microset and then make sure it's symmetrical with the other side. So here I'm just applying a wash of uh, black paint, watered down white black paint, which I'm then rubbing off with a cotton bud to sort of make streaks and to fill in the panel lines. 
and how much you do this is just really personal taste because uh, nothing stays nice and shiny in real life it always gets a bit grubby that kind of makes it more realistic so basically just put it on very wet and then just smudge it off dry it up a bit with a cotton bud and just do that to the whole aircraft Okay, so this is our finished MiG-21, so we've dirtied it up a little bit. Um, the fit of the canopy I think could have been a little bit better, but overall it's not a bad little model and I think that's, it's a big improvement to the Matchbox one that I made a long time ago, uh, which was a little bit wonky if I remember right. So anyway, so now this has been done, we've got our, our slightly out of period pilot in place which you can't see in this but uh, what we'll then do is I'm going to use this to take some photographs and make uh, some posters some poster art uh, which you guys may or may not be interested to see and I might show you a little video clip of that in the next video okay thank you very much for watching and I'll speak to you soon